All right, guys, so we're taking a look at a new SpeedyB 5-inch frame. Uh, I think they're calling it the FS225 V2. Uh, check the link in the description. I forget the actual name of this. It's kind of generic. Yeah, they just call it SB Frame V2 here. Uh, they had a V1 frame. I think they may have um, fixed some problems with that one. I'm not 100% sure because I've never flown that one or reviewed it or or even watched any reviews on the v1 so uh, if you have questions about that sorry i uh, can't help you with that one but we're just going to take a look at the frame we'll put it together today um, we're going to preview the parts i'm going to be putting into this um, build that's going to be coming up uh, shortly and uh yeah it's got i'm, I'm going to show you the frame i got a stack uh, basically got a f um, uh, new esc from team uh, team motor a new flight controller from fox here uh, some new motors from team motor here uh, some new SpeedyB VTX antennas and a 1.6 watt uh, video transmitter from KPRC. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So this is a, a fairly, I don't know, I consider it a pricey frame at, at $50. Uh, some may not consider that pricey. I'm pretty sure people that that buy Armaton um, frames at $100 plus are thinking this is pretty cheap, but as you can see, it comes in some pretty nice packaging, and of course, you know, uh, you do end up paying for that. Uh, if, you, if, if you're wondering about where the costs come from, the packaging does cost a little bit. Just for as an example, here's a four-inch frame that I got from Banggood. It's like a, this is another build that's coming up in the future. Four-inch folding frame, being see, you know, Banggood special, cheap, and these come in a little bag like this with all random parts all spread in there. Uh, so that's where the uh, cheaper stuff comes. Anyway, so here's the bottom plate, and it has, uh, this is the front here in the middle and the back, it has holes for 30 by 30 here in the back for the VTX, and also 20 by 20 on a sliding, uh, on a sliding rail here, 30 by 30 and 20 by 20 holes for the flight stack. I think all of the, the different plates, like this is a two millimeter plate, I think all of the plates are two millimeters. And here's the uh, top plate. I think that's two millimeters, and then this is the sandwich plate again. I think this is, yeah, these are all two millimeters. Get a bunch of these antenna tubes, four of them. Get a battery pad and a battery strap, only one. And here's a look at the arm. I think all four of them are the same, and they're all five millimeters thick. And eh, not the best quality in terms of the cut, a little bit sharp. It's a little bit beveled, but not, not great. But yeah, it's five millimeter arms that are not going to break uh, unless you hit something really hard. Get these uh, metal uh, side plates for the camera. And here's all of your hardware, standoffs, uh, M3 screws, and nuts, everything you need to uh, put the frame together. Get a couple of these TPU parts here. This is for the back for the uh, VTX antenna. Also for your receiver antenna back here. And then I think this one here is for the XD60 to secure to one of the standoffs. So I think I can tell what the uh, main difference here is on V1 V versus V2. I think the V1 had a top plate here. This top section would remove. I'm not 100% sure on that one. That might be a different frame. I might have them mixed up, but that's possibly where the difference is between V1 and V2. Now there's a bunch of uh, 3D printed parts that you can buy as options. Like here's uh, for the DJI Air unit. And these are all available on the website. This is the arm bumpers, um, additional um, antenna mounts is for crossfire antenna, and you get your GoPro mounts as well. This one here is for Hero 6 and 7, and this one here is for a Hero Session 5. All right, so I went ahead and put the entire frame together. Uh, pretty straightforward, uh, so like a lot of other typical 5-inch frames out there. So you uh, have a bottom plate that goes all the way across the bottom here. And then you have the sandwich plate, some press fit nuts to hold the arms on. So you have a screw that goes in through here. It's an 11 millimeter screw. And then a longer, I think 14 millimeter screw goes into these standoffs here that are these two screws here. These are all M3 screws. There's another screw that is uh, depicted to go through this hole here. And then another set of um, uh, press fit nuts that go in that hole, this larger hole right there. But they use this larger 30 millimeter M3 screw that goes all the way through. It's obviously for a 30 by 30 stack. I'm going to be using uh, 20 by 20 parts here. I'll be showing you here. 
short leading CDM2 20 by 20 holes. For the M2 screw, I'm going to be putting the stack, stack screw through there. And it, they have the larger hole in the bottom here, so you can uh, put the screw through the bottom plates and get access to that. So that's nice. Now, I'm just debating whether or not I should just um, source another uh, M3 11 millimeter screw. I don't have any at the moment, so I'm just going to go ahead and build it like this. You're going to need um, uh, another M3 11 millimeter screw, uh, another four of them to uh, mate with these press fit nuts in here. If you want to basically um, add one more screw for a little bit more security in, ter in terms of holding the arm down. So the arm's only held with this screw here and this other screw here, two screws per arm. Uh, this other third screw here is actually where the arm can slide in and out. So um, you can actually, in um, and when you use this feature, you can actually just loosen this, this screw here and then take out these two screws and then you'll, you'll be able to pull the arm out if you break an arm and want to, and want to switch it out. Um, so I'm not sure if that's really not that necessary because I can't, there's no play in the arms or anything like that, which wants to tighten everything down. So it seems pretty solid. So I'm going to elect to not put that in there. I'm just going to use a, you know, put my 20 by 20 stack in there. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. I just put all the regular screws everywhere else, MTP parts in the side here and the back. Uh, one thing to note is that on the camera, uh, the camera right here says 19 millimeters. You can barely see that. On the other side here, it says 20 millimeters. So they, it's a clever design. They basically, if you have if you have a 20 millimeter DJI camera, you just flip these or just swap these two side plates. So the 20 millimeters are on the outside and they'll give you the clearance for a 20 millimeter camera. And with the 19 millimeters on the outside, there should be space there for a 19 millimeter standard micro camera. So that's what I'll be using. And I'll go ahead and I'll show you the um, weight here and then the rest of the parts. All right, so. 121 grams for the frame, not too bad. All right, so let's go quickly through these parts. I'm not gonna uh, go over every little spec here. I'll list them here on the side of the screen if you want more details on all the specs. You'll see more of this in a future video when I put this build together. And you know, it's just a typical five inch drone build. You know, basically stick the ECs on there, mount them, and then uh, solder the motors to the ESCs, and then you just all plug the goes from the, the, the ESCs to the flight controller, and then you just uh, solder the camera and the VTX to the flight controller. It's like, I've done about a thousand of these, so it's not that difficult, but here's what this looks like. This is a uh, F55 uh, 32-bit ESC from T-Motor, uh, up to 6S. This one will do 96 kilohertz, so a lot of the newer um, 32-bit ESCs are 96 kilohertz capable. So if you want smoother running motors, uh, 96 kilohertz is, I guess, the latest trend, even uh, smoother than 48 kilohertz. But this is a 20 by 20, as you can see here. This is what the bottom looks like. The uh, capacitor is pre-soldered on, and this is a 35 volt 470. And yeah, it just comes with the little rubber grommets and mounting hardware and the wiring loom that goes to the flight controller. The flight controller I'll be using is the Foxier F722 V2. Also a 20 millimeter board. So nothing too super exciting here. So it looks like they're getting smaller. Still uh, micro USB on this one, not USB-C. But it's got the F7 chip on here. Yeah, it looks like it's got black box data and all that. So yeah, again, I'll list any important specifications here if you want to see them. I'm sure it's got like six UARTs and all that good stuff. It's a pretty modern flight controller. So, you know, it ought to be, uh, have all the latest features. Here's the uh, motor I'll be using. It's the uh, T-Motor Pacer uh, Freestyle 22, oh, sorry, 2306, 2550 KV. This is the V2. I don't believe I've uh, flown the V1, but yeah. T-Boner makes good, nice motors. Very smooth bearings, of course. Nice windings. Nicely constructed. You know, nothing. Usually they don't have any major flaws in their motor, so. Uh, you know, it's a good motor for a good price. All right, so this is the new uh, Kip RC video transmitter. Uh, the RAD VTX 5.8 gigahertz, 1.6 watts. So pretty sure that this is not going to be sold in the U.S. because none of the U.S. stores can sell uh, video transmitters that can go 
higher than one watt anyway. Uh, so this is only going to be available at the uh, GetRC store, I believe, or any of the Chinese stores, probably Banggood and whatever. And uh, they can only sell it to uh, countries that allow power this high. But of course, it comes with wiring looms and you know uh, SMA adapters and all that. And I think this one is yeah, it's MMCX connector, and this one 1.6 watts. I'm sure this is going to get super hot. But it's a 30 by 30 board. Uh, not sure if there's any heat sinks in here or not for heat dissipation. I'll guess we'll find out once I put the actual build together. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I'm sure if you are at maximum power output, you're going to be um, uh, dissipating a lot of heat. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm in the U.S., so I won't be testing this at above one watt anyway. So I'm not exactly sure why they sent this. I'm just this, this another throw in, I guess, in the uh, the Synalog 30 shipment they sent me so well this will I'll just put this in this build as the VTX and then they had they sent along their new antennas as well speedy B so they they come in a pack of two but they should come with two of the same but they sent all four of them like this so the antenna uh, the end all looks the same look like this right hand circular polarized but they they sent the four different versions so they have a uh, SMA MMCX, uh, both right-handed and normal, and uh, micro FL. So these are the four available options for the SpeedyB antenna. This is the new one, and I'll be putting this into this build so you can see what that's like. And I think that is it for all the parts in this video. So that's going to do it for this one. Uh, stay tuned for the build. The build is going to be really quick. Uh, photos of the different parts. I'll put the ESC on with the motors on, and then I'll show the different. Uh, pictures of the different components that are soldered onto the flight controller and that'll be it for the, that, that one and then of course the flight footage for this one, how it, see how it flies I'm sure it'll fly just as good as all the other 5 inch ones I built recently I haven't noticed a whole lot of differences lately in at least the last year and a half in a lot of these 5 inch builds, they all seem to perform pretty similarly anyway, that's going to do it for this video any questions let me know down in the comments section below and I'll talk to you guys in the next video